Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Allison and if you're new here, welcome to Wonderland. Today I'm going to be talking about my favorite books of 2020. Now this year I read so much more than I've read in previous years and I do think that it's because of the pandemic but also I am now on board with audiobooks. If you don't know, I am severely dyslexic. Uh, it's a wonder I love to read and I love to write, but I know a lot of other people who are dyslexic that absolutely adore it. But I I have trouble focusing on books when I can't read them. So I've really liked audiobooks and I've really been enjoying listening to them at my desk at work through either the Audible app or the Script app or my library's app and I am able to listen to an audiobook. I've listened to so many audiobooks this year and I really have been enjoying myself. My goal was to read 50 books this year and I read 52 actually is where I'm currently at so there's a couple more weeks in the year and I'm able to read those. But I want to talk about my favorite books. Some of these are series that I did complete um, but overall I want to talk about my favorite books of the year. I keep a notebook with one books to buy. I definitely have like a list of all the books I need to buy and then I highlight and check them off once I do. But also in here I have my best books of 2020. Scoot it over so I can put the books here because I don't feel like taking them off my shelf because I just reorganized my shelf. So the first book of 2020 that I absolutely adored was Glitter by April Lynn Pike. I originally got this book at a signing where the author was there and I was really interested in it because it is described as Breaking Bad meets Marie Antoinette and it just sucked me in and the story does not disappoint. I haven't read the second one. I believe this is a duology if I'm not mistaken so I haven't read the second one but I want to get to it very soon but this book has everything. It has mystery, it has romance, it, it has you know the whole like secret drug kind of cartel thing but the main character is inserting it into makeup. The whole world is very flushed out and really cool to look at and I just really like these characters. I love the concept of this world where it's in the future so it's dystopian but they're living in a time period-esque way so everything's super technologically advanced but they live like they are in the era of Marie Antoinette so it's super interesting and I can't gush about it enough. The second book on this list is Twisted Devotion by Jesse Elliott. If you know me, you know I love Jesse Elliott's writing. I love the romance books that she writes and she came up with Twisted Devotion which is the last installment in the Twisted series or the world and it did not disappoint. I have never been like a romance reader. It wasn't like my forte, but as I started reading Jessie's books, I've kind of dipped my toes into it and gone into that direction. As I'm growing up, I am almost 25, so I am more inclined to read those books now uh, than I was when I was 16. But the characters, the world, I can't really give a lot away about this book without spoiling everything, but I love the fey world that they live in. It is in our world but they're like hiding in plain sight. I love all of the characters, all of the male love interests and just the world that Jesse has created is super fun and the characters are funny and snarky and I love them. The next book on this list is Slay by Brittany Morris. I randomly picked this up on audiobook one day when I was reorganizing my shelves and I read it in one sitting. It is such a good contemporary. I'm not a huge contemporary reader but I loved this book. It really dives into into the black culture and it shows a technology stance because our main character does create this game slay with all of the black culture nuances and just different little things from her life and it's a VR game so each person battles is what I understand like they can battle it out um, 
I totally know I'm envisioning like Minecraft in my mind, but it's not Minecraft, but it's really cool and she ends up being blackmailed by a user in the game and she has to try to figure out who it is and in the end when you find out who it is it's it's interesting and she hasn't told anybody she is the creator of Slay and it's a secret from her family it's a secret that she even plays the game and I loved just everything about this author's writing, I will definitely be picking up anything Britney writes in the future. The next books are actually a series. I was sucked into the book side of TikTok, obviously, and everyone raved about Akatar or A Court of Thorns and Roses series, and I had the books. I had always wanted to read them, but I was really intimidated by Sarah J Moss's world and her writing because there was so much of it and everyone loved it and I didn't want to be the person who hated it. Let me tell you that is far from the truth. I am obsessed. I love Akatar. My favorite characters are Moore and Nesta, Cassian. I love Feyre. I just am in love with this series and I can't wait till Nesta's book comes out. I... Oh... I cried, I screamed, I remember finishing Akatar and I ordered the next two books the next day because I needed them and I could not wait. And so this series has jumped into my favorite series of all time. Sarah J Moss just has a way of bringing you into a story, bringing you into a world and crafting it in such a way that you get really attached to her characters and as a character driven reader I really appreciate that. The next book is Sadie by Courtney Summers. I am obsessed with this book. I listened to the audiobook which I highly recommend. It's really cool because this this book is told in a true crime podcast way where one part is the true crime podcast that this guy is giving the story of Sadie and the other is through Sadie's point of view. So you switch back and forth between present day of the podcast and past of Sadie and learning about this crime that has happened and it's so interesting and I'm obsessed with true crime podcasts originally but this was something else because I really didn't know where the story was going to go and the twists and turns that were going to happen so if you love mysteries if you love true crime podcasts and you love murder that sounds weird but you love that kind of genre i would highly recommend getting this book either through reading it or listening to the audiobook it's so well produced and it sounds like you're actually listening to a podcast so it i had to put it on my favorites list because i've been screaming about it to every person that i know Next is another series, and that is the Throne of Glass series, which is behind me, by Sarah J. Moss. After I read Akatar, I jumped right into the Throne of Glass series, and I was not sure I was going to like this series. But by the end of this series, I was crying because I was so sad that I was losing characters that I didn't want to lose. And the last book that made me do that was the Harry Potter series, When the Deathly Hollows came out and I just had so many emotions. Here's a TikTok of me crying while ending Kingdom of Ash and the series is so special to me and I know it's special to other people but it really brought me back into why I love reading and why I love writing because it inspired me into going back into what I'm I'm like tearing up just thinking about Aelin's story. Um, it just really inspired me to get back into what I love and those characters in that book are super important and I love Aelin and Lysandra and Rowan and all the characters I just attached myself to them and they mean so much to me in my heart. Next is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. I was not sure I was going to enjoy this book as much as I did. Uh, when it was announced that it was a President Snow book as a prequel, I was really angry because I didn't want to read President Snow. But I truly loved this book because it showed that... The environment that you are bred into really makes you who you are. Snow had so many opportunities to not be who he was and not be the way he was, 
but he still turned out to be the President Snow we know and hate and it's interesting to see why he hates Katniss so much. Why from his past he does not trust the rebels, he doesn't trust Katniss and from the second he sees you know little things about Katniss he's reminded of this time period and I find that very fascinating and I've always been the type of person that loves a wraparound story where you can connect the dots of different pinpointed moments in a person's life that created them into the monster they are. The next book should be no surprise to anybody and that's Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. I am full-fledged back into my Twilight love. I have watched the movie so many times this year I'm probably gonna watch them tonight now that we talked about it but this series means so much to me, the Twilight series. Um, I've talked about it before and Midnight Sun was so interesting because I never really knew the depths of Edward. I think we all kind of knew him on a surface level but we only saw him through Bella's eyes and Jacob's eyes. I've come to realize that Edward and I would never be compatible as like love interests but I could probably be friends with Edward and I just found that his inner monologue and everything we got that was going on in the background of Twilight is fascinating. Again, I love a wraparound story where I can pinpoint, oh my gosh, when this was happening, this is what Edward was thinking. And I want more. I want all of the books in Edward's point of view, New Moon, Eclipse, Breaking Dawn. I need to know what he was thinking because he doesn't sleep and he doesn't, like, he's always brooding and I need to know. Also, I want to know his motivations for different things like that we only got from Bella, but his motivations for doing things in Twilight were totally different than what Bella was thinking. And it's just, I'm tw I'm a Twihard at heart, so I can't, I need more. The next series is a three-parter and I could not choose one book. And that is the Folk of the Air series or the Cruel Prince, the Wicked King, and the Queen of Nothing books. I just finished these a week ago and I'm obsessed. I understand the obsession with Cardin and Jude and being told a story by an unreliable narrator is really interesting. I think that Holly Black always brings you into a world that you just want to stay in and you want to get your hands dirty in it and this book definitely did that. I was rooting for Cardin at one point. I was rooting for Jude. I was rooting for, you know, the bad guys, like uh, being told a story by a person that has motives that aren't always the best is so much fun because you get, you start doubting your mind. You start doubting yourself and thinking, is this the right decision? Are they evil or are they just looking out for themselves? You kind of grapple with that and when you have two main characters that are so unreliable and so set in their ways but they love each other at the same time and you know Cardin and Jew's relationship is so complicated and I just I fell in love with these characters and I understand why everyone else did at the time that these came out and I cannot wait to get my hands on the novella set that just came out of all of card and stories. I'm very excited for that. And that is my list of the best books of 2020 that I read. What are some of yours? I'd love to know them down below. Maybe I've read them. Maybe I'll put them on my TBR. But I definitely had a lot of fun reading this year and I had a lot of really good reads and that's all I can ask for. And this year has shown me why I love to read, why I fall into worlds so heavily. I hope you have happy and safe holidays and I will see you next time in Wonderland Loves. Bye.